John Jones is easily the UFC's biggest disappointment and maybe the greatest disappointment in all of sports. John Jones has come back after almost three years of not fighting and is set to fight Cyril Gaon for now the vacant heavyweight belt in the UFC. Many UFC fans, including myself, are very excited to see whether or not John Jones can successfully make a return after not fighting since the beginning of 2020 and going straight to the deep end in fighting a easily champion level fighter in Cyril Gaon. But with this historic return, I wanted to look back at John Jones's career and see how he built this reputation of being the sport's biggest disappointment. And if it isn't obvious already, when we call him the biggest disappointment, this is not in reference to his fighting career and accolades, as he has one of the greatest UFC resumes of all time. Instead, this is in reference to his very disappointing actions outside of the octagon that has made him so hard to like despite having an all-time career. And if you know a little bit about John Jones, you already know this video is going to be pretty long, so please sit back and enjoy. So firstly, let's go back to the beginning of John Jones's career before he had this reputation of being a big disappointment because in order to be a big disappointment, you had to have had big expectations. Long ago, John Jones was once known as the next young phenom with limitless potential. He came into the sport as a very decorated high school and juco level wrestler, but he quickly became a devastating striker in his MMA career. If you coupled this rapidly improving skill set with his freakishly athletic gifts such as his insane 84 and a half inch reach and his in general super long six foot four frame, he was bound to be a champion soon. And soon is an understatement. In his only eighth fight in the UFC, John Jones became the youngest UFC champion ever at only 23 years old and he made it look easy against a legend in Shogun Hua. And from this point on, he would look unstoppable. For his first title defense, he would defeat and be the first to submit Rampage Jackson. In his next fight, he would terrifyingly sleep Lyoto Machida with a standing guillotine and make a 10-year-old TJ cry. Seriously, Lyoto Machida, when I was young, was my favorite fighter because he did karate, and I also did karate. But when I saw Lyoto Machida's soulless body flop to the ground like that, it made me rethink martial arts in general. From this point, he looked like he was meeting the star expectations the fans were putting on him. John was dominating big names and for the most part had a nice guy reputation. From his post-fight interviews and also interviews with Ariel Hawani, he just looked like a young star that was starting to blossom into a very good fighter. But this reputation would receive its first crack in 2012. John Jones in 2012 crashed his Bentley Continental GT into a telephone pole while driving under the influence. After pleading guilty to the DUI, John Jones only received minimal punishment which included a $1,000 fine, the classic blow to start ignition, a couple required driving classes, and a suspension to his license for six months. I was young at the time, but I don't remember too many people villainizing John Jones yet, and it seemed like a classic case of a star getting a little too rowdy. I think plenty of stars have had DUIs and maintained a relatively good reputation. But I think the first time John Jones really received hate from his fans was when he pulled out of UFC 151. John Jones was originally set to fight Dan Henderson for UFC 151, but when Dan Henderson pulled out due to injury and the GOAT Chael Sonnen was set for the late replacement, John Jones refused. This led to UFC 151 being cancelled since the fight didn't have a big enough main event. Following this, Dana White had some very harsh words for John Jones, calling him selfish, and this was again the first time a lot of fans were in unison in hating John Jones. But I think this hate would settle momentarily as John Jones would go on to defeat Vitor Belfort and unfortunately the GOAT Chael Sonnen and he would also take part in one of the greatest fights of all time when he fought Alexander Gustafsson. But again this would all change when he started his feud with Daniel Cormier in 2015. And now a very infamous press conference for their first fight, John Jones and DC got into an absolute brawl. Granted, DC kind of started it by pushing John, but it was more so a classic face-off shove, but John Jones would immediately turn this up to 100 when he threw a legitimate punch and ignited a total brawl. John Jones was fined $50,000 by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for this incident, but he still continued to trash talk DC and it got really dirty. If you haven't already, I would suggest looking up YouTube clips of their beef going into their first fight. But essentially, John Jones said things such as he would spit in DC's face, that he would kill DC, and again, it got really dirty. John Jones would eventually win this fight against DC very convincingly, and he still did not even let go of the beef 
after the fight. In the post-fight interview, he admitted that he was classless and he still said that he didn't like DC. This destroyed his good guy persona and this was definitely the start of the John Jones we know and hate. But for some UFC fans, they actually do like when a fighter turns into a villain. But I think this next infamous incident was an actual villainous move that I don't think many UFC fans or people in general could condone. Shortly after John Jones defeated Daniel Cormier, John Jones was the perpetrator of a hit and run incident in which he ran a red light and caused a three car collision and drove off from the scene. The most unfortunate part is that one of the people involved in the collision was pregnant and her arm was broken in the process. Though John Jones did come back to the scene to grab the cash that fell out of his car from the street. He received felony charges for his actions, but he remained a free man so long as he was in contact with his lawyers. Subsequently, the UFC stripped him of his title and removed him from the rankings. Fast forward a year later in 2016, John Jones would come back and defeat Ovince St. Preux for the interim light heavyweight title and basically book a very highly anticipated rematch against DC to unify both titles. Though just days before UFC 200, a stacked event in general topped off with the John Jones and DC rematch, John Jones would unfortunately be popped by USADA and stripped of the interim title, again disappointing fans and also destroying a highly anticipated event. John Jones after the fact claimed that the banned substance that USADA found was because of wiener pills he took, but the panel denied him and he was still banned for a year by USADA. This would mark the first time any fighter in the UFC would be stripped of their title twice, but if you think two times is going to stop John Jones, you'd be sadly mistaken. John Jones would make his return a year later after serving his suspension and would finally rematch DC and prove who is the best light heavyweight in the world. John Jones in this fight would iconically drop DC with a perfect left high kick and finish him on the ground, finally ending the rivalry and truly proving that he is the best light heavyweight in the world. In his post fight interview, in contrast to their first fight, he recognized DC as a model champion and model person overall and recognizing DC as his greatest motivator and greatest rival. And with this post fight interview, a lot of us fans thought that John Jones has finally turned a new leaf and was finally going to learn from his lessons and become the champion that he was supposed to be. But in typical John Jones fashion, he always finds a way to disappoint us fans, as just days after this win against DC, he was immediately stripped of the title, protesting positive for a steroid called Terrenable. Consequently, this fight was officially overturned as a no contest due to John Jones testing positive for Terrenable, and again, this was a huge disappointment for the fans. I feel like I've said this a thousand times already in this video, but John Jones would come back again after his suspension a year later to fight Alexander Gustafsson and again win the UFC light heavyweight title. From this point forward up until 2020, John Jones would defend his title three times against Anthony Smith, Thiago Santos, and Dominic Reyes. And though you'd think John Jones would have changed and become maybe a model citizen given that this was his fourth chance at becoming a champion, he was still getting into legal trouble during this time. In 2019, John Jones assaulted a waitress in a club in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I won't go over the details because YouTube wouldn't like me doing that, but the body cam footage can be found on YouTube of the officers questioning the waitress that was assaulted by John Jones, and the details are pretty graphic. Though John Jones again got a slap on the wrist as he was only given a deferred sentence of 90 days in which during this time he could not violate the law. John Jones again would find himself in legal trouble when police responded to gunshots early morning in Albuquerque, New Mexico and would find John Jones in a Jeep clearly intoxicated. John Jones would fail a breathalyzer test and police would find an open container and firearm in his Jeep and he was again charged with another DUI and also negligent use of a firearm. Now all of these incidents were pretty bad, don't get me wrong. But I think this next one in 2021 was really, really bad and in my opinion is the worst and saddest thing that John Jones has ever done. In 2021, John Jones was inducted to the UFC Hall of Fame for his performance against Alexander Gustafsson and the ceremony was set in Las Vegas, Nevada. For some reason, bringing John Jones to Las Vegas is like pouring water on a gremlin, as unfortunately, literally hours later, after he was inducted to the Hall of Fame, 
Police were called to the Caesars Palace Hotel because of a domestic dispute. What had happened is that John Jones' daughter had called the police because John Jones was assaulting her mother who is also John Jones' fiance. The police footage of John Jones' arrest can be found on YouTube and the footage is very, very sad and disappointing. While John Jones is getting handcuffed and arrested, he is very clearly intoxicated and also very emotional. John Jones, in fact, gets so emotional that at one point he headbutts the police car and is actually charged with tampering a police vehicle. Though the domestic charges were dropped and he claims that he has left his alcoholic self, this was a huge stain on his character and truly shows that he has not changed as a person. Though I do want to see John Jones win against Cyril Gaon in March to add to such a great UFC career and legacy, I'm afraid he's going to do something after. As I've shown through this video, John Jones is consistently disappointing fans as after every time he does something great, he does something so, so terrible. After his huge win against Daniel Cormier in their first fight, he hit a pregnant woman in a hit and run. After he regained the interim title after defeating OSP, he immediately got stripped of that title for testing positive in a USADA test. After he won against DC again and momentarily had a character change, he got popped again by USADA for an illegal substance. And then finally, when he was inducted in the Hall of Fame in 2021, literally hours after he had a domestic dispute with his fiance and headbutted a police car. If John Jones isn't the most disappointing athlete in all of sports, I really do not know who is. He always finds a way to let his fans down due to the actions he does outside of the octagon. But what do you guys think? Does John Jones beat Cyril Gaon and will he do something after the fight that will again disappoint the fans? Who knows, he might go for his, what, fourth time that he gets stripped of a title? I don't know. But I do hope John Jones does win this title so that he can add to his legacy and have a really good career.